morning, good morning. Jesus, bless his Savior. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're not already standing, please stand. We'd like to welcome you this morning to Benaja Mountain Zion Holiness Church of God. If you're watching by live stream or in the main sanctuary, we'd like to welcome you. At this time, we're going to get in the attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you again to say thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for the opportunity to stand in your holy place this morning, God. God, we thank you for the ones that want to be here but couldn't, God. We ask you to bless the ones, God, that are sick and shut in, God, the ones that are grieving, God. Whatever they're going through, God, we know you're able to be, you're here, and you're able to be where they are also, God. God, we thank you for this, our place in the building this morning, God. We ask you to come in and set a fresh anointing upon this service today, God. Whatever it is you have for us, God, let us open our ears and open our hearts, God to hear the word, God. We ask you, God, to forgive us for all of our sins, God. Those things you told us not to do and we did, that we did do, what we did, weren't supposed to do, God. The things you told us to do and we didn't, God. We ask you to forgive us for that also, God. God, we thank you for this Youth Sunday, God. We ask you to bless all the youth, God, to have they participate in the service, God. Bless them and bless their families, God. God, we thank you for all things, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the scripture by Kennedy McLean, followed by a declaration by Mackenzie Goodman in that order. Thank you. Good morning. We'll be reading Mark 14, verses 1 through 11. Let us read. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of the unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might be taken by the crowd and put him to death. But they said, Not the feast, of, let there be a pro or people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the liver, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an avalanche box of anointment of spikenard, very precious. And she break the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had it in action. And said, why was the waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and it had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye would may do them good, but me ain't not, not always. She hath done what she could. She come forth and to anoint my body to work. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she have done also spoken. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray unto And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he saw how he might conveniently treasure him. Good morning, I'll be reading declaration number four. Let's read. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I will trust in the Lord. I will be strong and of good courage. I will not be afraid, neither be dismayed, because the Lord my God shall lift up a standard against my enemy. There is nothing too hard for God. He is the Lord Almighty. He is my way maker, light in the dark place and a promise keeper. Therefore, I will trust in his word that he will never leave me nor forsake me. I will worship him. He is God.
know how wonderful our God really is? It, do, do I have any witnesses that don't get that you know 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 that you really know that, that no one else got to convince you because you know for your sanctified self that he is wonderful it, let, let, I'm a, let me maybe not maybe I ask the question right do you know for your sanctified self that our God is a wonderful God make it personal don't, don't worry about no one else's reaction but know for yourself that he has brought me out that he's made ways out of no way all glory and honor belongs to our God it belongs to him When we come into his house, all glory and all honor belongs to him. The baby did not sing just to be singing, but they sang unto him. And I want you to know that when we come into his house, it's not for a form or a fashion, but it's to give him glory corporately. It's to give him honor corporately. It's to give him praise. They started off by praising him. They had the audacity to say to, to declare that you are my strength and I don't know about any of you but if you ever had a weak moment in your life woo, God help me in here and he became your strength in those weak moments that's a good place to give him glory and then they had the nerve to say woo, hallelujah salvation and glory I had to go where they went because that's in Revelation 19 when they begin to sing praises to our king when we come into his house, we ought to be coming ready to sing praises to our king. Some of you say, well, I can't sing. It ain't about you singing more than you singing to him. Because I'm not, I don't need to hear what you're saying. It belongs you singing it unto him. Oh. Our God is good. Woo. Yes, I know that it is Palm Sunday and it is on this particular day in our Jewish history that our Savior came riding on a donkey. Wait, don't get mad at me. And they begin to throw their coats on the ground and begin to say hallelujah. Blessed is he that came, that is coming in the name of the Lord. They threw their coats down in honor of their king. Some of y'all need to come Wednesday night because I, I got a twist on it. Come on Wednesday. Come on Wednesday. I'm going to be inviting you now to come on Wednesday. Because today I'm not going to talk about his triumphal entry because it was his triumphal entry that led to Calvary. And there were some things that took place on his way to Calvary. Next week we'll celebrate and we'll celebrate his resurrection because you know they laid him uh, on Friday. They hung him high. On Friday, they stretched him wide. On Friday, he hung his head. And on Friday, for me, he died. Whoa, glory. But I'm so thankful that that's not where the story ends. We'll celebrate that next week. But in three days, he got up. Y'all sit. Y'all sit. We're done. Whoa, glory to God. Father, we thank you now. Yeah. And we bless you. And we bless you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Move in this moment and in this time. Let your will be accomplished in this place. For our desire, oh God, is to please you. Our agendas, our plans and things that we had concocted in our minds, it doesn't mean anything. Unless you come in and sit on us. Breathe in this place, God, like only you can. Some of us in this room need a fresh touch just from you. We need you to touch the very situation that we are in right now. Because you're the only one that can make a difference in our lives. We've searched all over and found that we couldn't find nobody. 
nobody greater than you for your name is above all names and you're worthy of all our praise mighty are the works of your hands <laughs> and so God we thank you for what you're doing in this place now God my prayer is always simple that I decrease and you increase in me blow through me God like a trumpet in Zion today God we want to hear what the spirit has to say to this church we will take what you say and we'll apply it to our day to day living that we might be a blessing and a beacon of light in a very dark world today you to you be honor to you be praise and to you be all the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus our God our Savior and our King let the redeemed of the Lord say amen amen I'm gonna jump I'm gonna jump into it Mark 14 I'm not gonna read all of it but give you a quick synopsis they were in the house of Simon the leper and depending on where you read where we read in John they were at Lazarus house the same story this same story again remember the Gospels were written for a different particular people so they begin to write and saw it from a different viewpoint however when matter of fact if I'm not mistaken in John they named the woman in Matthew and Mark they don't name the woman because it says there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And it says that she broke the box and poured it out on his head, his being Jesus. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. Let me just say, and this is, and they murmured against her, it's always somebody trying to discourage you from doing what God has commanded you to do. There's always somebody. I'm a, let, me, let, me, let me make it real plain because I, I want to make this so relatable. There's always somebody that might be sitting beside you or in your vicinity that comes and worship with you and comes lift up holy hands with you, come and shout amen with you. But then when you do something different and out of the norm, always got to murmur and complain about what you're doing. Today, if you will allow me to, to, to share just from my heart and what the Lord has laid on my heart, um, I got something real simple that you don't know what it costs me is what I want to talk to for my praise is costly. Let me, let me say that one more time for the, for the ones in the back. You, you don't know what it costs me for my praise is costly. People don't even know the struggles, the trials, the tribulations that you've gone through just to get here on a Sunday morning. Um, we don't know everything that you had to go through, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the, the good moments, the bad moments, the in-between moments. We don't know what it took for you to get into this place. And so when we come into his house, how dare we sit down on him as if he hasn't done anything when you don't know that the, your very one, the one that you're sitting beside, they had to press their way through just to be where you are. Oh, that we are, yes, we are online and yes, we are uh, allowed to stream and we're helping those that can't even get into the house of God. But oh, those that desire to be here, oh, those that wish they could be here in our midst and we take it for granted that we got activity of our limbs you just don't know how much it costs me just to be in this place matter of fact can I just be honest it costs me everything to be here because you don't know like I know how good the Lord has been for me if you could just testify to somebody real quickly let them know you don't know how like I know how good God's been to me you don't know what he's carried me over brought me through brought me under just for me to be in this place and then you gonna sit down and look at me murmur and complain honey you don't know like I know 
what the Lord I'm gonna teach it and we get up out of here we'll get up out of here in just a minute Spike Nard <laughs> Spike Nard was used in that day uh, very expensive perfume and I, 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 can, I can understand why the why the church folks complained and said why don't we sell it why don't we why, why did she even waste it on him why didn't we just sell it and give to the poor can I be honest with you I'm gonna be honest with you from this pericope right here uh, those church folks weren't concerned about the poor because if they was they would have been taking care of it beforehand Oh, yeah, Reverend, I'm, I'm going to go there today. Pray for me. We, we, things that we talk about, we put on a facade in church. Somebody said, why did we do that? Why didn't we just feed? If you, if you was really concerned about feeding somebody, you would have fed them already. Instead of trying to make a show and a spectacle of yourself, you would have been already doing the work of taking care of the poor. Jesus comes back and says, wait. He says, leave this woman alone. Leave her alone. For what, what you don't understand is that she is preparing me for my burial." And while you were yet complaining about doing the poor, he said, the poor you're going to always have. Wait, we ain't just talking about financially poor. You're going to have those that are poor in spirit. Mm -hmm. Them you're going to always have, so you can always minister to them. On, but you ain't going to have me always. And so, therefore, let her alone because what she's doing is now going to be a memorial unto me and of her of what she did for me. And we're going to keep on talking about it. And here we are almost 2,000 years later still talking about what this woman, I'm going to call her Mary because that's what her name was in John, what she had did for Jesus almost over 2,000 years ago. We don't know. That very, that costly spike nard was equals to a year's salary. Now. Imagine just in the, with inflation in 2024. That spike not be real high right about now. But it cost her. I don't know if she had a script. I don't know if she had to say. I don't know what she did to be able to get it, but she got it. And she was willing to take that what was costly and precious to her and give it to our Savior. I'm going to help you real quickly. Um, there are some of you that, again... Listen, you, my praise, when I say that my praise is costly, because again, you don't, you don't know the whole story. You just know a little bit of what I told you. Um, everyone that is this, in this room has a testimony of how good the Lord has been to them. Amen. You, 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 only you know what he has brought. And really, if you could really tell the story, we really would be here, as they would say, to mid-morning. Because if I release the mic and say, how, how good, I can't let you tell the whole story. You can only tell a little bit of it. Because you want to tell, to give all the intricate details. But we don't need the intricate details. All we got to know is that you was in trouble, and then the Lord brought you out. That's what makes the difference in here. Spike Nard, I got to get back to my Spike Nard. Spike Nard, it was in the gospel accounts and anointing. It was, and I'm going to be amazed. I, got, I was last night, I was sleeping and the Holy Spirit woke me up and was revealing unto me that it was a woman that carried Jesus. It was a woman that anointed Jesus. And it was, a, it was the women that told of his resurrection. Don't, don't miss it. Don't, don't, don't be so saved and deep that you're going to miss it. It was the woman who carried the word. Whoa. It was a woman that anointed the word. Then it was the women that went and told that the word got up. <sighs> I'm Y'all going to make me fight and struggle. All right, all right. I'm, I'm willing. I, I can do it. I can handle it. It was the woman... Mary, the mother of Jesus, that carried him. It was here Mary, more than likely Lazarus' sister, that was able to anoint, that took what was costly and precious to her and anointed him for his burial. Now, while here, I believe it says that it anointed his head. I believe in John, it talks about her anointing his feet. Either way, she took what was costly and precious to her and anointed our Savior and our King, preparing him for his burial. And then, after he had died, after he had went to hell and after he had gotten up, it was the women that told the other disciples, our Savior has gotten on up. And y'all, that's good news because that means now we got place. Now they were the first, see, they were the first ones to be able to tell that he had gotten up while everybody else trying to make a big deal. I don't know if he did. The women were convinced that he got on up. So why they say that women don't have no place? Well, if, he if, if she carried them, 
she anointed, and then she told of his resurrection. I need women all around us. Yep. All right, never mind. I'm going to say this. Let me say this because we don't do this a lot. You know, March is Women's History Month. Um, this, is women, this is Women's History Month where y'all make that. Matter of fact, they have International Women's Day, I think, around March 8th. And so we celebrate that and all that good stuff. But women, there is a place while others had, had considered women a second-class citizen, women serve great purpose in the mission and the kingdom of God. And so while we're trying to belittle them, we need to celebrate them because if it had not been for the woman, many of us, let's just be honest, would not be here today. Wait, let me bless you. Spike Nard had a, had a strong, distinctive aroma, similar to a, an essential oil that clings to the skin and the hair, and it continues to give off its heady perfume. It is also thought that um, it had medicinal purpose. So here, again, this woman who has scrimped and saved a whole year's salary to have this, this Spike Nard and kept it in an alabaster box. Um, uh, I was studying about the alabaster box and how precious and you know how you know some of it sometimes it was made of a, a gypsum wood and and she it said that she broke it that breaking is significant because the truth is we don't get out the the best of us until we are we have been broken Y'all, please don't make me preach too hard. I just want to be able to enjoy Jesus today with y'all as well. Many of us in this room have had to be broken in order for the best oil that's been, that God placed in us to come out. Let me do it like this. The, the, the anointing oil, this, this right here, has to go through a crushing process. In order to get the best of it out, it has to, go, it has to be beaten and battered and bruised in order for it to get the best oil and you watch this you don't even get a lot of it out you just get a little bit of it out but it has to go through the process of being beaten and some of you in this room like I'm tired of being beaten I'm tired of going but it's in the process that God is bringing the anointing out of your life it's out of that day you when when you go through what you go through and then people see how you have come out of what you've been through you can say that my praise is costly because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done you don't know how good he's been that even when I was in a place of distress God was breaking me and bruising me that I might be anointed for this time Whoa! everybody talking about something I'm anointed are you with, anointed yeah that should be a scary word to some of you because to be really anointed means you're willing to be broken and battered and bruised for Christ's sake. That wait a minute, because it ain't about you, it's really about him. And him being able to be you, you being used by him to help somebody else. To say that you're anointed means you go through the process of being beaten. To say that you're anointed means you have gone through some trials and some tribulations. Watch this. That in the midst you were able to help somebody else. That you weren't trying to make a name for yourself. But you just wanted to please God. I know this is triumphal entry. I know this Sunday, that's Palm Sunday. Watch this. But Jesus was battered and bruised just for us and we miss it yeah he was on assignment but he literally was on assignment for us because we did not qualify we were not fit he was the only perfect and pure lamb to be able to be a sacrificial lamb just for us. And they beat him beyond recognition. Wait, though, he was already anointed, though. He was the anointed one. God help me, don't miss this. He was already the anointed one because he was all God and all man at the same time. So he was, but in his being broken and battered and bruised and whipped for us, he was able to produce a greater anointing that when he got up with all power in his hand, that same anointing that rested on him now rests on us. When you say that you're anointed, have you really 
really thought about, I'm anointed. Now, I'm, I'm going I'm to challenge, challenge us because there are certain things that we are anointed for. Don't be mad when I say what I say, but it is what it is. Um, for, the, for those that are married, have a spouse, do you not know that God has anointed you to be with your spouse? Because you're the only one that can handle your spouse. You're anointed to be on the job that you are on. Because when others would have had the same job, they give up too easily. But yet God keeps giving you a perseverance to stay. When you wanted to quit, God says, no, it's not time yet. And he allows you to be in places and in positions. Watch this. While others are moving ahead, he has you to be in a place of consistency. Oh, God, help me. Can, can, can I make a confession that I, I had? I used to... I told you, I think I told y'all some time ago, I used to get mad when folks would come in and be on a job six months to a year only to try to get ahead to get to another position. But I, I've always said this, that if you ain't, learnt, you ain't learnt the job just yet in six months. You might think you had, you might think you excel, but you ain't really experienced the job in your fullness. Because you need at least a year, maybe 18 months to understand the fullness of the job. I used to get mad. I was like, oh, these jokers keep jumping and job hopping and all this good stuff. And here I am. And like when I wanted to leave, the Lord wouldn't let me leave. But then when it was time for me to leave, I had gotten comfortable. And then he made, the escape. He made a way of escape. But I knew that I was anointed because when I tried, everybody else was saying, no, at this time, we've moved on with somebody else. I don't know if you ever had that moment in life where you applied, you knew you was qualified and they didn't accept you, and it's okay. But you got to be comfortable that God has anointed you for the position that you are in right now so that you can be a blessing to somebody else, that you can be a beacon of light because you going through what you're going through is only going to make you shine bright like a diamond so that when they say, wait a minute, why is you still able to maintain and still uh, keep a, uh, persevering what you're going through? Because I got, the, I got the anointing of God on my life. So you're anointed to be with the spouse, you're anointed to be on the job. Kids, you're even anointed to be in the schools that you're in, in the counties that they are in, Rockingham, Guilford, Alamance, wherever you have position at. You're anointed to be where you are because you don't know the, 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 the caliber of people that you'll reach. Those that don't know Christ, they'll see Christ in you. And when they see you not being the one in trouble, and like, well, wait a minute, how is it that you was there but you ain't getting in trouble? Because trust me, as we read, that if God is on our side, he, he going he gonna to lift up a standard against our enemy. He's able to protect us and shield us from all hurt, all hurt, harm, and danger. It gives you an opportunity, and you, you might not have your Bible with you at that time, but I'm sure you, most of y'all got the Bible app because your youth, your youth minister tell y'all to keep that Bible app, but you be able to share with them that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when they see you in a, in a way, they're like, hey, you ain't like us. I know if you want to be like me, you got to get to know that the God that I serve is real. You got to be able to tell your story, but see, you are anointed for where you are. I'm going to say it like this. Y'all even anointed for this church to be here and be a partaker of this ministry. Because I'm going to say this, there is no perfect church in the earth realm. Have you ever seen folks who, y'all look at me when I say this, have you ever seen people who, who join the church and then leave the church, then they join the church and they leave a church? We call them church hoppers, right? It's okay, y'all can say yes, it's all right. All right, they church hoppers. Um, and they always talk about, so I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find. Well, first of all, the Bible says this, be still and know that I am God. Get somewhere and be still and maybe hear God for yourself because sometimes what we do is make emotional moves at the wrong time and you end up missing God in the process. Because, wait, watch this, I don't mean no harm and no disrespect. I, this, this is a cliche classic. I wish I was, now I wish I was on a comedian stage right now, but it's a cl cliche classic right here. Child, my season is just up and I just need to move on. Um, you know, you know, I've been hurt. And so, uh, you know, I think it's just time for me to move on. And watch this. What you're doing is leaving here to go find the exact same thing that you left. You left here. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings because you didn't get used like you thought you was. And so you went and tried to go make a deal at the other church 
Because they said, we'll let you read the scripture. We'll let you pray a prayer. We'll let you, we'll, 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 we'll let you, we'll, you know what? Matter of fact, doc, we'll let you exercise your gift. And then when they have to be held accountable, you get mad again. And like, you know what? I just feel like my season. I said, your seasons always are changing. When, when our God is a consistent God, listen, I have no problem if you are relocating or whatever the case is. But be, make sure, don't, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. Don't put your, your emotions to awesome and, and blame God that it's time for you to move when you're trying to move on your own. Don't use God as the, the, as the scapegoat for you trying to move. If you want to leave, just leave. Because now we done told a lie in the house of God. And we got to continue with that same lie, child, you know, I just, I just had, I had to leave because, you know, my season was, my season's changing. And, you know, he's shifting me. He's shifting all of us. Matter of fact, if we ain't careful, if the Lord should delay his coming, we're going to shift again. If you should hold out, it's going to be another shift. But we sitting here, you know, child, this is my season. I can't handle it. And so, it, and, and I, I was watching something on the, online. It was, um, matter of fact, this is how powerful it was. Because it was, um, it was a landscaper, and he had this machine, and he was digging up this tree. Now, normally, this tree had been planted for a minute. And so, he was able to dig around this tree to move it to another location. Watch this. Roots and all. You know, because if you cut down a tree, you can't, you can't relocate a cut down tree. Here's what got me. Here's what got me. He took that, that tree, roots and all, planted it where it needed to be planted by some water so that the roots could get the nutrients that it needed. And sometimes we find ourselves planting ourselves, but we, we only got three roots when we need a few more roots to continue in our growth. So then, you know, when, the roof get, when our roots get short and they start drying up and withering up, well, here we are shifting again, going to another church because, child, I'm dry. Well, if you stay where the water is... I like that. We won't be like the deer who's panting for the water now because our thirst will be quenched all the time. Wait, can I make that real spiritual? When you, are, stay, when you stay connected to the Lord Jesus, he said that he would give you a, a well of living water on the inside of you that starts bubbling up. So when you think you're thirsty, woo, he says, I'll give you a drink that you'll never run dry. Why? Because it's always in you. Matter of fact, Jesus even said in the Beatitudes, he that hurt, uh, hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. My question to you is, what are you eating and drinking? Are you feasting on his word and drinking of his spirit? Or are you just feasting on McDonald's and Burger King and Pete's and, and Chick-fil-A and all that? At some point, you're going to have to feast on his word and of the spirit so that you can have a bubbling spring of water living on the inside of you. So that you ain't always got to go to the preacher or the deacons and say, can you give me a word? No, I got a word on the inside of me because I know what God has done for me. Listen, ain't no one going to have to tell me because this one, there's a line up. Listen, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't care if it's that. As a matter of fact, can I bless you real good? I don't even care if you do the shortest uh, verse which says Jesus wept. You can preach right off of that. Because he wasn't weeping like you think he was weeping. He was weeping for the fact that they could not grasp what was yet to come. Oh, God, he didn't so much weep because Lazarus was dead, but he wept because they did not understand who he was. Well, who was he? Well, he told them that he was the resurrection and the life. And I get excited about that because while we in resurrection season, he said, ye that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That means there are situations that might, may seem like it's dying, but because you're in Christ Jesus, he can bring it back to life. Have you ever had a situation that you thought was on the way out and the Lord breathed, life, breathed new life into it? I've seen folks on their on, 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 on they, on they sick bed and they, they thought they were going out, but God was able to breathe new, brand new life into them, give them new strength. Not that they was leaving here, not because they had called hospice in, but because they had called on the name of Jesus. And he breathed right on them one more time. And that's how God does for us. He will blow right on us, right in our dead situations, and bring new life. Whoa, that's what I love about him. 
So when, when you see me running around, when you see me all on the floor, when you see me rolling and, and lifting up my sanctified hands, you don't know what it costs me, y'all. You don't know what it was. What it, what, I'm bringing my everything to him. Mary, in her alabaster box, took it and took that, 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 that costly oil, that anointing oil, broke it and began to anoint Jesus because that was her sign of worship unto him. While Jesus was teaching them and letting them know that, yes, she's doing this for my burial. That's wonderful. She didn't even know that. All she knew is that she just needed to offer him something. And my question to you today, what are you offering the Lord when you come into his house? What are you really offering him besides your presence? I'm going to get in trouble when I say this because I know that some of us, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and prepare us. And if you hear it online, it is what it is. I know next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, a.k.a. AKA Easter for those that, you know, don't only come once a year. And we got to prepare ourselves whether they come or whether they don't. But my question is, what are you really coming for when you come into the house of God? Listen, we ain't, your beautiful suits and dresses, your hats and jewelry, that's going to be all fine. But I dare you just don't come for that. Come for Jesus. I, I dare you not to try to, try. for us to see you, we're going to see you anyway, but come for Jesus. Uh, can, can we get past the, 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 fashion, the fashion shows in church and just come for Jesus? The beautiful hats they have this place, but let's just come for Jesus. Because I found out that Jesus is just enough. Matter of fact, because if I came in with jeans and a t-shirt, I'm still coming for Jesus. If I don't look the part like you think, I'm still coming for Jesus because it ain't based on what I'm wearing. Watch this. How do you know that? Because God's looking at your heart more than he's looking at your outer part. You the ones that's looking at what, child, did you see what they was wearing? Child, I can't believe it. But get past that and see Jesus. And, and though we think we're doing God a favor by showing up, what good is it to show up and then you don't offer nothing? This is why I knew I was going to get in trouble right here. You won't lift up your hands. You barely want to clap your hands. You won't pat your feet. You won't say thank you, Jesus. But you come into his house as if you did him a favor with an arrogant attitude. Well, God, I came. That should be enough. When we have no regard for who he is, you'll come into his house disrespectful. Wait, but then be the same Christian that be like, I don't want nobody disrespecting me. Well, you're going to go both ways, baby. You can't come in God's house disrespecting him. All right. This, ain't, this one going to be one of them type of sermons. I, I thought we was going to shout, and we still may shout because I can feast off of this myself. Whew. Because at some point, you're going to have to get past the formalities of church, watch this, because, oh, can I just be honest, over the years we have put, came up with formalities of what church should look like, but sometimes I just want to come in and just lift up holy hands and just bless him. Sometimes I don't, I don't want them to have to, to open up because we know that the Lord is in his holy temple. How do I know that? Because I brought him with me. Sometimes all the musicians have to do is hit the right note and we can go pray, go do our praise him, him, an uh, anthem. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is still worthy to be praised. No matter what, he's still worthy. And if, watch this. If the presence of God should come in and hover over us and we don't get a chance to get a word, thank you, Lord, for your Shekinah glory resting on us. Because in his presence, I get all that I need. Have you ever been in his presence and watched it? The preacher didn't have to say nothing, but you got just what you needed. Some of you come to church looking for a healing, but you got to come up with a made up mind that my healing is right now. Matter of fact, we learned on, on, on Wednesday night. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Paulette, for preaching to us and sharing with us about our healing. Because some of us was able to experience healing. Watch this, not just in our physical, but also in our spirit and in our emotions. Because you do know that we are emotional beings and very, very emotional creatures. And in that, sometimes those emotions have to be healed in order for everything else to be in proper alignment. Otherwise, the body might be healed, but your spirit and your emotions are all jacked up. And therefore, you won't be able to receive everything that God had. So he done took away what's on the outside, but you still got a jacked up inside.
How can your spirit man be jacked up? Well, you, you, you're hearing things, you're watching things, and then they start, start coming out of your mouth. You, your spirit man jacked up because you ain't spent no time with God. We have to spend time with him. Kids, if you could just dedicate 30 minutes a day spending time with the Lord, reading your word. Maybe listening to some, some Holy Ghost filled music. Everything don't have to be, trust me, kid. We ain't got to listen to all ratchet. Wait, let me, listen, let me bless you real goodly. Because um, it ain't always your fault. Because sometimes we as parents be listening to some ratchet stuff too. Amen. I know y'all ain't going to say amen. I know y'all be bumping it. It's all good. Be, see, when you're honest with yourself, you can get delivered right there. Amen. It's all right. I know some folks that listen to 102 on a regular, and it's all right. They come to church, lift up holy hands, still listen to 102. It's all right. I listen to 97 ever so often. Don't get mad. Don't judge me. I ain't judging you, but I still come up in God's house, still giving him glory because I know, I just know what I like. And I got to make it relatable because y'all sitting here, I've been saved since I've been 20. And so since you've been saved since you're 20, you ain't listening to nothing. No, nah, some of y'all done been to comedy concerts. Some of y'all done been to the R&B concerts. Some of y'all been to the hip hop concerts. All of it. And then come around and give us a flash of gospel at the end of the day. Listen, I just want you to know that all of us are different human beings, but you got to be able to still spend time with God. If you want to feel like you connected to him, you got to spend time with him. I love my wife. In order for me to, to, to get to know her even more, I got to spend time with her. You don't know somebody from a distance. Come on, oh, that's just my, see, here we are. Uh, I'm going to say this even for the kids. Hear me. Everybody is not your friend. Um, the truth is, you probably got about three good ones. And three still might be too many, but at least three good ones. If you got more than three, check your circle. Jesus had 12. Out of that 12. And he picked that 12th one. It make you wonder, because again, if we, like we read, Judas the one talking this buffoonery, we should have sold it. We should have sold it and given it to the poor. I want, I, sometimes I'll be wishing I was there sometime, be like, I would say some things, I'd be like, brother, stop your line, you ain't interested in the poor. Because the very one that's in charge of the money is the stingiest one. I'm going to get back up here because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. <laughs> no, y'all ain't got mm -mm. Matter of fact, can I give you some pointers on Judas Iscariot? Matter of fact, watch this. I'm going to give you some strengths and I'm going to give you his weaknesses. It says he was chosen as one of the 12 disciples, the only non-Galilean. It says that he was also, in, here we go, in charge of the disciples' funding. You got to be careful who you put in charge of the money. And it says he was able to recognize the evil in his betrayal of Jesus. At first, he could not. But when it was all revealed unto him, he was able to, he had great remorse. Here's his weaknesses. It says he was greedy. He betrayed Jesus. And he committed suicide instead of seeking forgiveness. I'll say this because my time is out. Sometimes we do try to get, do the easy thing or what seems easy rather than having a conversation with the one that we have wronged. Jesus already knew he was going to be betrayed because he picked the betrayer. He already knew that he was going to be sold for 30 pieces of silver, which in that time equals a slave. Matter of fact, so Jesus to Judas was only worth a slave's pay. That, that's what they were paying. That, Pretty much, he was, Jesus was auctioned off silent. He was at a silent auction. We got you. 30 pieces of silver. Watch this. He takes it. Then once he realizes what he has done, he tries to give it back. And now the ones that gave him the money. Now, nah, we can't touch that. That's got blood on his hands. And right now, it just got you. Because we, we, done, we done did our part. Isn't it amazing that rather than having a conversation with Jesus, in his overwhelming sense of remorse and regret he goes and commits suicide the enemy will have you to a place thinking that you know what won't nobody forgive you it's all over you may as well take yourself out and the enemy's job our adversary the devil is to cause you to be in a place 
of stress, anxiety, hopelessness, feeling like there's no way out, feeling like you can't make it, feeling like you can never accomplish what God said you could, and because you're in this overwhelming emotional state, you will do things that will cause detriment to this physical. This is what happens when you don't spend time with God. And again, Jesus had 12, and really, he only had the three. The ones that he could confide in, show some stuff, show them some things that all the other disciples could not maybe handle at the time. Not that they were, you know, they didn't, they were not connected, but it's the fact Peter, James, and John were right there. It was almost like Elijah and Elisha, wherever you're going, I'm going with you. Jesus handpicked these brothers. And out of them, they turned this whole world upside down. Imagine if we just spent a little bit of time with him. What we could, how much, how much impact we could have. Wait, we didn't got to do the world. Let's just do our community. We spent a little bit of time on him, with, with him. How much impact we can have in our neighborhood. And then, as you making an impact, I'm making an impact. We collectively start making impacts on the city, on the county, on the state. Why? Because we're coming together in our anointing. That's why I'm telling you, your anointing, if, if, if you really anointed, it costs you something. The anointing that God has placed on your life, it, you had to go through some things in order for you to, to even experience a level of ministry that you're experiencing. Can I, can I, minister, can I minister to you right quick? You, you have gone through some things that have brought out a, a new fresh oil in your life. Your playing has shifted. And normally I, I shouldn't be using the mic because that's not my area, but your playing has shifted because you've been spending time with him. There's a freshness in the playing that you do because there's a different sound that's being released in the heavenlies. And in you playing as you are, people's lives are being impacted. Mm -hmm. Preachers, preachers, to those who have to have the opportunity to share, your preaching has shifted. It ain't even about really getting the mic, but it's the impact that you're making. For those that have gone through some things and God's brought you out, it's your testimony. That's what's making a difference when someone sees, wait a minute, I heard, and isn't it amazing, they always hearing about you, but they'll never come see about you. They always heard that you were sick. They always heard that you were down in them, but they don't never come to see about you. But when they see you, I heard that you, yeah, but I'm not no more. What you don't know is that while I was yet in my sick state, my down state, the Lord came by and raised me on up and blessed me in my state. And so while I am here, let me go ahead and tell you how good my God is. You got to get to a place to let them know that this anointing that you see Woo, I'm not playing with it because it costs me something. I don't have time to play with people's lives because it's costing me something. What's it costing me? It's costing me everything. It's costing me my whole life. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And I want to live right so I can hear him say, well done. I don't have time to play the games of the church of yesterday. I got to do what God is calling me to do now. And if you don't want to do right, that's on you. But I got a job to do. To tell you that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life through and by Christ Jesus. And if you don't want to hear it, you go down to the church that's telling you about money, and you get all the money. But honey, what good is it to have all the riches of this world and still die and go to hell? What good does it mean to have all the fine houses and cars, and then you still lift up your eyes in hell? Talking about some, can, can you send them? Can you send Lazarus? No, I can't. Because as it was preached some time before, there's a great gulf between that divides us. So I can't go there and you can't come here. But what I do know, that you can get it right on this side. You have the opportunity to get it right, right now. So you don't have to worry about lifting up your eyes in hell. You can change tickets right now. Y'all remember when we used to do that, that play? Um, what, was, what was the play? The train, the train. The glory train. Everybody thought they was on their way to heaven. Making them stops in hell. They be like, wait, what? 
But I did. And right, you may have. But you, your heart was far from me. And I kept, I kept hearing, I was listening to a podcast where a brother kept saying, he kept reading about when Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you, but you sang in his name. Mm. You prophesied in his name. You even fed the poor in his name. Allegedly, but for whatever reason, he still said, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. And I don't ever want to hear the Lord say, depart from me. So why are we doing, let's, can we just be holy because God is holy? Can we live right because God is living right? And wait a minute, I know you're going, we all going to trip and make some mistakes, but watch this. Here's the good thing about it. Here's the good thing about it. Is that you can pick yourself up, dust yourself off, come back to the Father and say, God, I messed up. Please forgive me. I did not mean to go in this direction. I know that I did some things that were outside of your will, but I'm right here waiting on you. And the good thing about it is God will say, here, here you go, my son. Here you go, my daughter. I love you. I have forgiven you. Go and sin no more. That's what I love about God is that even when we mess up, he still gives us another chance. When everyone else cuts us off, God still gives us another chance. When everyone said, that's it. They ain't never going to make it. They ain't never going to mount nothing. God says, I'm not through with you just yet. So in your failures, God can still use you because if you fail forward God can always lift you right back up that's why I say now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and he presents you faultless yeah we got some issues in this room you won't admit it it's all right you don't got to but the issues are here but it says that he presents us faultless before his presence would exceed in joy Woo! Glory, that's good news right there. And it says, to the only wise God be glory. And see, when, when others see your issues, God don't see the issues. All right, all right. Oh, I got to go. I'm, the book is closed on my end. I ain't even going to go back up there because I'm going to do just right here. When, when everybody else see that you make mistakes over and over and over again and has walked away from you and said, you ain't never going to be nothing, God says, no, I'm not so. Just still my son. They're still my daughter. I can use them. But, but, and then we be the ones, God, but look at them. They doing this. But what was we doing? We, we, we cannot forget that the same God that saved us can save and deliver our brothers and sisters. So, because watch this. I don't want to come to church and we just exclusive that we the only ones going to heaven when we got a job to do to tell everyone else that the same God that saved me can save you. And I know they don't talk about that because we done made church the social pop, popping club. But watch this. No, this is, this is a house for everybody. The drug dealer, the drug user, the, the, the whore, the, 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 the pimp. All is for everybody. Because we all were in need of a savior. We all were in need of a touch from the Lord. And it's just because we got ours before they got theirs don't mean that we have to give up on our brother. We got to still go to where they are and say, guess what? I just want you to know that if you keep living in this condition, hell will be your home. But I got away. His name is Jesus. And he will cause you to escape your destination to hell. He, he loves you enough that he don't even want you to do this. But see, you got to be able to tell the truth. Problem is we keep looking at him. Mm-hmm, look at him. Don't you know that someone looked at us too and passed us by? That's why now we can say, somebody pray for me. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Had me on their mind. Took a little bit of time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. Thank you, God, for having someone to pray for me. Then it says, Jesus prayed for me. All right. My book closed. Go to John 17 in your study time. Read John 17. There were three prayers that God, and in that God had already prayed for us. Jesus himself prayed for us. While he was yet in the garden, he began to pray for us. Oh, hallelujah. And in his prayer, he was praying for all. Wait a minute, but we weren't even on the scene. I know, but so his prayer was a futuristic, prophetic prayer because somewhere along the line, he knew we was going to come on the scene. And so he prayed for us. And just like he told Simon, Simon, I have, the devil desires to sift you as weed, but I have prayed for you. Sometimes I got to remind myself I could be a Simon sometimes. And he has already prayed for me that when I have been converted or I have been strengthened, go back. When I've been converted, go back and strengthen my brother. This walk that we're in is a no soul left behind mission. 
No soul can be left behind. Are there souls that's going to go to hell? Because mm-hmm, there's going to be some that's going to completely reject them. But our mission is to reach as many souls as we can to let them know that Jesus is soon to come. Our, our mission is to let them know that he is still the savior of the world today. And if we trust in him and obey, we might it might not always be pretty, but just know that at the end of the story, victory shall be ours. I might go through some things. I might experience some hurt and some heartache. But in the midst of what I'm experiencing, God has been faithful. And so while I'm here, I'm going to offer him everything that I have. And what do I have? It's just me, God. Everything. I, I might not have silver and gold, but in the name of Jesus. Here am I. It's me, oh God. I might not sing like the singer sang, but I'm going to offer him my everything because he can take my little bit put his anointing on it and make it so much. While I ain't got a rift to run like everybody else, let me just sing unto him. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Woo. You are a wonderful God. Y'all stand. We got to go. My time up. But he's a wonderful God. And because he is a wonderful God, we owe God a wonderful praise. And so I'm going to ask you, just in your own way, however you need to, don't be, don't listen. Don't worry about nobody looking at you. Bless God for these next 30 seconds, for how good he's been to you. Because this anointing cost you something. You didn't listen. You didn't go through what you went through just to sit on the sideline and say, here I am. No, he's using you for purpose. So when I count to three, I want you to give God everything that you got. Okay? And you're going to have to give it to everything, whatever's in you. So I don't do like they do. Give him whatever you got. Ready? One. Two. One, two, three. Give it to him.
love when the old folks would say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Remember, he, remember he been good to me. Deacon, he been good to me. Saints, he been good to me. Going to altar call. Just look at look at some. Just look at one person. Just look at one person and tell them my anointing costs me everything. that don't know him. Maybe there's somebody that found themselves in a backsliding condition. Maybe there's somebody that's going, that wants to be a partaker of this church. Listen, we'd love to have you. Come now. Make a move. You want to be saved. You want to rededicate. You want to be a member. Come on. Because, listen, this is a good place. This is a good atmosphere. Because when I shift it to this next one, oh my, some of you going to have to move real quickly in this one.
because we had a move, but I, I didn't open it for salvation. I opened for rededication. I didn't open it for for uh, for being a partaker. But maybe you just need something from God. Wait, wait. We're not even gonna do it like the old school. I ain't gonna have you gather. I ain't gonna have you gather like like you think I'm gonna have you gather. If there's something that you need and you ready to stand in agreement to what God has done. Get into this altar. I'm gonna touch it. Now we're gonna keep it moving. I did get to this altar. Get to this altar. Don't be afraid. Whoever.
that we have come into agreement with, I stand on this. God has already done it. I need about 12 of y'all to begin to look for it. Look for it throughout this week. I need you to look for it as it's already done. Matter of fact, by the time you get back to your house, start thanking God for it in advance that it's going to show up this week. You know why? Because as he came riding, they begin to say, blessed be the name who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. That's what they begin to say. He came riding in on the donkey. celebrated who he is. Come Wednesday night, I'm expound on why did your cry change? Because we celebrated him on Sunday, but by Friday we're talking about crucified. And sometimes we need to shift and give him glory. Father, right now, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you for your word. We even honor you for this time that we're able to praise together. I thank you, God, for meeting every need that came to this altar. It is already done in Jesus' name. We're healed right now. We're delivered right now. We have been set free right now. And everything that the enemy has tried and will try, I thank you that you've already gone before him. And you have already bound his hand. That, that whatever I speak, God, it will come forth. Woo! And not slowly, God, it's going to come forth in a mighty quick way. So I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this house. Thank you for your presence that's in this place. This will be the house of prayer. This will be the house of praise. And most of all, God, this will be the house of salvation. You are building this house. So to you be honor and glory and praise. Thank you, oh God, because we recognize that the anointing is costly. Nobody know what we've been through. Don't nobody know what we've experienced but you. And I rejoice in you knowing that. Woo! It was for our good. It was good for us to have been afflicted because we now have seen your goodness in our situation. To you, oh God, be glory. To you, oh God, be honor. And to you, oh God, be praise. 